to this guy. He has to keep his adrenaline up or he'll be ripped in peace. We open with a guy, Chev Chalios, dropping from his bed feeling some type of way. He goes to the living room and sees a CD which has the words F.U. written on it. Of course, he's curious, so he slots it in the video player and it's a man, Ricky Verona, telling him that he injected him with a substance and that's why he doesn't feel too good. In the video, we see him poison Chev after he had been knocked out cold by one of his men and he says he has max an hour left to live. He goes on to tell him that this is revenge for killing Don Kim. Now we see Chev's face. He's seething. Then he screams and starts destroying his TV, like really smashing it, throwing it on the floor, kicking it, all of that. Once he's done brutalizing the poor television set, he runs out of his house and downstairs to the parking lot. He steps on cars to get to his car and runs over a man that dared to complain. Now he's driving like the transporter, which by the way he is, and we get a visual of his heart beating so fast. While he's driving, he calls his girlfriend Eve and it goes to voicemail. Then he calls Dr. Miles' office. A lady answers and says Dr. Miles is not in right now. He's busy. So so Chev leaves a message with her for the doctor. The message? Chev Jelios is a dead man. Chev is still driving and it seems like he's tapping out. His vision is blurring up, his heart rate is slowing down, and he's nearly falling. But he manages to step on the accelerator, and that seems to breathe some life back into him. He now calls a guy named Kayla who's a, uh, drag queen I think. Chev is telling him that Ricky showed up at his apartment last night, and basically clapped him. So now he's looking for Ricky, and he says he must get even with him if that's the last thing he does. Well, from the look of things, it might literally be the last thing you do, sir. That's if you do. He tells Kayla to find Ricky Verona. Now Chev arrives at Orlando's hood. He bursts into a club, grabs Orlando, and drags him into the bathroom pointing a revolver in his face. He's asking him where Ricky is. But as he's threatening to clap Orlando, if he doesn't tell him where Ricky is, Orlando's boys burst into the bathroom, all pointing guns at Chev. Orlando is still begging for Chev even with the gun pointed to his face. A real stand-up guy. Orlando insists he doesn't know where Ricky is. And in fact, he is even looking for Ricky because he cheated him on a business deal and still owes him 7.5 grand. Chev is finally convinced, so he drives drops his gun. But then he starts staggering. His heart is doing that thing again. So he asks Orlando for some sugar. Understandable. But even though Chev is dying, Orlando still asks him for his money. You just gotta love a man who's focused on the back. Chev pays and Orlando throws him some sugar. Chev tears it open and the contents fall over the bathroom floor. But he doesn't care. He proceeds to eat all the sugar with his nose. How strange. But this is a matter of life and death. The sugar stabilizes him and he's able to stand up now. He's telling Orlando that he's looking for Ricky because some Chinese folks hide Ricky to clap him. And Orlando just knows this is about Don Kim. But as they're talking, his heartbeat starts slowing down again, and he says the sugar isn't working, but he knows what he has to do. And what is that? Kick some ass. Before Lando can even confirm what he meant, Chev turns and headbutts one of his men. He then says, who wants a piece of this? As he runs out of the club and everybody starts chasing him, he runs into his car and drives off. While he's in the car, Ricky Verona calls and asks him why he isn't dead yet. He also talks about sleeping with Chev's girl, and Chev says he's coming for him. He also says a certain Carlito will clap Ricky when he finds out what he did. But Ricky says he and Carlito are boys now. While he's still on the phone, cops has Chev to pull over multiple times. He ignores them. Another call comes in for him. It's Dr. Miles. Chev tells him he's been poisoned and he's dying. He explains his symptoms to the doc just as he's driving through a mall. Yes, inside the mall. The doctor says it's the adrenaline that's keeping him alive right now and tells him he has to keep moving to stay alive. He suspects he was injected with the Beijing cocktail, which blocks the adrenaline receptors and blah 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 blah. But basically, if he stops moving, he dies. While this call is still going on and the cops are still chasing, he crashes his car and ends up on an escalator. He climbs out and is now running. Dr. Miles says he'll be in LA in about an hour and tells Chev to just keep moving. Chev runs outside and sees a taxi. He throws the person inside out of it like it's GTA and tells the driver to just drive. But his heart starts doing that thing again and he tells the driver to crank the music up. Coincidentally, the song is talking about a cranky, achy heart. He's nodding so violently to the music and shortly after, he tells the driver to pull over. He gets down from the cab and tells the driver to wait for him. He goes into a supermarket, drags the attendant out, drops him on the floor and points a gun at him. He says to him, you move, you die and goes around taking all sorts of energy drinks. But while he's doing all of this, he still makes sure to call his girl, but it's still going to voicemail. He grabs a flower for her, though. Great lesson, boys. Never forget the misses, even amidst tremendous chaos. Kind of a simp moment, though. He goes back out into the cab, and I'm actually surprised his cab guy waited. Chev now tells him to head to Beverly Hills, and he drives off. We're now at Carlito's penthouse. The place is guarded with heavily armed men, but somehow, when Carlito dives into the pool, he sees Chev in there. Chev is asking for an antidote, but Carlito says there's no antidote, and there's nothing he can do. That's the stuff they give to horses. Horses. He's even telling him that it's a miracle that he's even still alive. Chev is now asking for some help to find Ricky, but Carlito says no. He says he loves Chev, but maybe this makes up for the Don Kim hit, which was perhaps ill-advised. The heat from Hong Kong after the hit has been more than they anticipated. By the way, Carlito has had a smile on his face this entire time, but once Chev yells at him, that smile disappears. He asks Chev if he's disrespecting him, so Chev just gets out of the pool and leaves. Outside, his loyal cab guy is still waiting for him, but to be fair, he just earned $200 to wait for three minutes. I'd wait too. 
too if it were me. But the deal breaker for the cab guy is Chev's wet clothes. He says Chev is not getting in his cab wet. What does Chev do? He grabs the guy, throws him to the ground, and then shouts something racist. Everybody around the premises rushes to jump him. Meanwhile, Chev drives away and while he's on the road, he gets a call from his doctor who tells him his flight was delayed. But he's now helping him over the phone. He says a lot of science stuff, but basically, Chev has to increase the ephedrine levels in his body and the energy drinks just won't cut it. He has to get to a hospital and get himself injected with epinephrine, an artificial adrenaline, but he warns Chev not to overdo it. Just a fifth would do. But I'm not sure Chev got that. He now gets a call from Kalo, who says he just spotted Verona's brother walk into the prince two minutes ago. Chev links up with Kalo, asks him a few questions, and goes in. Verona's brother sees him, pulls out his gun, and goes after him. Little does he know that Chev is hiding outside waiting for him. So once he steps outside, Chev hacks his hand off. He now asks him where his brother is, but of course he doesn't say. So a fight starts. This guy is still holding his gun with just one arm. Kalo comes to help his friend out, and hits Verona's brother with a stick. So he goes after Kalo. Chev tries to shoot at him, but he's out of bullets. Then as he's walking towards them, he sees the hand he just cut off with the gun, and he picks it up. Not just the gun, the hand. So basically, he claps the guy with his own hand. Since it was his own finger that pulled the trigger, can we say this was a self-deletion? Anyway, Chev takes the guy's phone and calls Ricky. Ricky does not understand how Chev is still alive. Chev is now really taunting him. He takes a medallion from his brother's neck, and Ricky gets really angry because, according to him, the medallion has been passed down from his grandfather. Chev tells Ricky it looks like he'll have to come and find him and hangs up the call. And guess what? Chev has forgotten what his doctor prescribed, of course. But he goes to the hospital anyway and describes it to the pharmacist. And of course, she knows what he's talking about, but she says she can't give it to him. She then leaves to go make a call. While she's gone, some guy there tells him a nasal spray has epinephrine in it, and Chev grabs a few packs and jets out. While he's emptying all the cans up his nose, a woman standing with some cop points at him and the cop starts going after him. Chev runs into a room where a sick old man is lying down. A few moments later, the cops walk in. They look around for a bed, say the room is clear, and leave. Then Chev comes out from the closet, puts on that ugly hospital robe, and just starts walking. He walks past the cops, but they notice him and start chasing after him. He starts running again. As he's running, he sees a man being wheeled into the emergency ward. He points a gun at one of the doctors and is asking for epinephrine. After nearly a whole minute, the guy finds it and hands it to Chev, but Chev is not satisfied with that. He takes a defibrillator and asks the guy to juice him. He does, and Chev is thrown straight into the elevator. The cops use that opportunity to go after him, but he shoots and they run off. He throws the man who was in the elevator out and closes it. Now his heart is racing, but he manages to sit up and take some of that epinephrine. After injecting everything into his veins, that's when he remembers to ask, how much of this stuff did he say to take? He then runs out of the elevator and out of the hospital super fast. He's running on the road now, and it's like he's a vehicle himself. He's just running with some crazy speed. And then he gets a call from the doc. He tells Chev they're in the air now, and asks him if he got the epinephrine. And without Chev even saying it, the doctor figured out that Chev took the entire thing, and he tells him that thing might kill him. He guesses Chev's symptoms, and he gets everything right, including being bricked up. Hmm, I need to get my hands on some of that. Anyway, before Dr. Miles hangs up, he tells Chev, been nice knowing you. Imagine hearing those words from your doctor. That's as good as a life sentence. But Chev just keeps running. He only stops when he sees a few people gathered around in front of a TV watching the news. Imagine his surprise when he finds out it's him they're talking about on TV. Apparently, he's a wanted man. And what's the first thing he does after discovering he's wanted by the police? He steals a bike from a police officer. This lad really thinks he's Mike from GTA. I mean, he doesn't just steal the bike and jet. He does a little spin before he rides away. He's now doing some crazy stunts on the bike with his ass open to the world. He stands on the bike, spreads his arm, and closes his eyes. So he doesn't even know when he crashes into a little outdoor restaurant. He blacks out for a few seconds, but his phone rings and that wakes him up. It's his girlfriend, Eve. Finally, she says she's been sleeping. Typical. He tells her he's been fatally poisoned, and a psychopath might be headed to her to torture her. But she acts like he just told her about the weather. He says he'll be with her in a flash, though. Even asks her to fry up some waffles for him. Now we see Ricky being presented with his brother's hand. He laughs and then says, so let's go get the bitch. And boom, we see Chev arrive at Eve's apartment wearing a tracksuit. He's saying they need to get out of here ASAP while she's talking about fixing the microwave. You have no idea what's going on right now, do you? She says she'll only come with him if he fixes the microwave. So he goes to do it. And while he's there, he figures the epinephrine is wearing off. So what does this guy do? He puts his hand inside the waffle iron and burns it. Eve is asking to see the burn, but he says no. She insists, so he raises his voice at her. But he quickly apologizes and they leave. But just as they're about to leave, Chev notices some men with pistols just arriving outside the house. So he's trying to hurry up and leave, but Eve says she has to go back inside to turn off the waffle iron. While she's in the apartment, the gunmen phone in. She picks up the phone but doesn't hear anything. While she's still saying hello, Chev runs to where the caller is standing, smashes his head in, and runs back to Eve just in time. As they step outside, he notices the other gunmen, so he quickly empties Eve's hand back on the floor to distract her. As he's trying to pick up her stuff, Chev runs off to fight off the guy with as little noise as possible. He successfully finishes him off and throws him into the pool without Eve noticing anything. They finally leave and arrive at some Chinese restaurant,
spot where Chev is using the nasal spray. He then tells Eve, who's having hiccups by the way, about what has been going on. He tells her he lied about being a video game programmer. He was actually a professional hitman. He goes on to tell her about last night's job and how he nearly clapped Don Kim, a mafia boss. But when he had a gun pointed at Don Kim's head, something just prompted him not to pull the trigger. He tells him to get out of town to disappear, be invisible for 48 hours. Basically, he quit the job for Eve as he's telling her now. Despite learning all this, you can tell she's still in love. Chev says he wanted to just go to her that night and tell her everything and skip town with her. But you know, all this BS started. But the mob hits, Chinese poison, and all that sound ridiculous to her. So she thinks he's just making it up to break up with her. She storms off. He chases her. And just as he's trying to explain things to her, his heart does that thing again. He goes down to his knees. And can you guess the solution he has come up with this time? To clap Eve right there. Of course, she says no. Who wouldn't? He tries to get feisty, but she hits him. So hard that she then feels bad for him. She gets close and asks if he's okay. And then things start to get a little saucy. People are gathered around watching them, like it's a football game. Anyway, he gets a call from Kalo. He has Verona. So as expected, Chev leaves immediately and runs to the location Kalo provided. It's Don Kim's shirt factory. He's in a cab now, and the Haitian cab driver notices he's not looking very alright. He thinks Chev is an addict, so he gives him some Haitian shit, as he calls it. Chev says, what the hell, and drinks it. At first he's calm, but a few seconds later he leans against the window, and everything seems to be slowing down. He arrives at Don Kim's shirt factory, but he's too late, because they have already clapped Kalo. Someone spots him coming down from the cab, but Chev doesn't go through the front entrance. He climbs up to the roof, sees some guy in a suit, and throws him down. Then he goes into where they have Kalo, and he's asking where Ricky Verona is. But the guy in charge there tells him Ricky has nothing to do with this. It's Carlito who wants him off the streets, because he has totally lost his shit. They say his antics of late have been causing the organization a great deal of embarrassment. He tells Chev to just go and find a nice and quiet place to die, and they'll take care of Ricky. But of course he doesn't buy that idea. He starts shooting at everybody in the factory, and guess who appears? Eve. Maybe now you'll believe what he's been saying all along. He manages to run to the elevator to meet Eve using Kalo as a human shield, but he takes a bullet in the leg in the process. They get downstairs to where the innocent tailors are doing their work, and one of the gunmen follows them. They manage to slither away, and then Chev comes from behind him and traps his hand inside a sewing machine. More men now come and are shooting at them, but they manage to escape through the fire escape. Well, you can say they're escaping fire for real. He claps the men that followed him, and they move. A few more men come after them and are just letting the bullets fly, but Chev manages to get even through the car, and he drives off. Eve now says, you aren't lying, referring to when he said he'd give it all up for her, and he says yes. But she also realizes that, if the poison part is also true, the love of her life doesn't have much longer. She's distressed. She's asking how it can be stopped, but he says only adrenaline can slow it down. Now what he did in Chinatown makes sense. So she decides to keep him alive by doing, uh, moving on. They're being chased by a number of cars, by the way, and men in the different cars are shooting at them. He manages to clap one. Anyway, Eve stops because he'd get really tired and probably fall asleep after. Guess you could just say she has a good head on her shoulders. He stops the car, gets down, and goes to clap a few more men. He then gets back into the car and drives off. He stops by a hardware store, tells Eve to stay in the car, and goes into the store limping. But of course, Eve never listens. She runs into the store and sees Chev hammering nails into his leg. He says he's doing that because he can't feel his legs. Just then, he gets a call from the doc. He's in his office now and he asks Chev to come around. Chev and Eve get there and Dr. Miles is now doing his thing on Chev, but it's not good news. He says what he's giving him is only temporary. He says he can put him on life support and string this out for a few days, but it'll go into a coma at some point. Dr. Miles offers to load him with stuff so we can just die peacefully, but Chev says that's not what he wants. He wants one hour. Of course, you know what he needs one hour for. This man right here, Ricky Verona. Ricky's watching the TV in his car and everything on the news is about Chev. Then he gets a call from Chev who's offering him a deal. He's says he wants the antidote, and in return, he'll give him back the medallion he took from his brother. He agrees, and Chev gives him a location to be at. You can tell that Ricky doesn't play with family because that medallion appears to be so important to him. Verona calls someone just as he's headed to the location. We also see Chev in a suit walking to the location in slow-mo. He walks into the place, heads straight for the bathroom, checks the insulin pump Dr. Miles gave him, checks his gun, wipes his sweat, and heads back out. He's good to go. He enters an elevator and pops a few pills. That's actually more than a few if I'm being honest. The pills start working really fast. He's hearing his mother's voice at admonishing him, but it's coming from the man who's with him in the elevator. The voice then changes to that of the Asian man himself speaking a foreign language, then changes again to Orlando's voice. Finally, it changes to his own voice and even his own face. He's really roasting himself now. All that finally clears and he sees that the man hasn't even said a word throughout the elevator ride. The man gets out of the elevator and two men are there to grab Chev and lead him to a room. They take his gun from him and lead him to some outdoor space where he meets Carlito and Verona. Verona asks him to be patted down again and they rip out his insulin pump. While Carlito is putting on his leather gloves, Chev is trying to get into Ricky's head and is succeeding. 
proceeding. He's telling him he's Carlito's little bitch, and Ricky gets riled up, stands up, and points a gun at Jeff. Well, Carlito yells at him to sit down, and he does. Aw, oh, man, can't you see what that looks like, Ricky? Anyway, Carlito brings out some more of that Chinese shit from McKay's, and is ready to finish off Jeff. But Jeff says not so fast, and is making gun signs with his fingers and pointing at them. Everyone is confused now, including me. Ricky thinks he's gone crazy, but then he points his finger gun at one of their men, and that one drops dead. Bullet to the forehead. Of course, it wasn't some magic act. Don Kim and his men had arrived, and it was one of his men that did the shooting. A shootout ensues, and men are dropping like flies everywhere just as the cops arrive outside. Ricky tries to pick a gun to shoot, but Jeff throws a bottle at him, and he drops the gun. But not only does he drop the gun, the gun blows off his fingers. Carlito, meanwhile, hides and makes a call to someone to come get him out of there. Oh, wait. Someone brought a grenade to a gunfight. Come on, that is not fair. Carlito throws one of his men on top of the grenade and uses him as a shield. Then he runs away. Ricky tries to run away too, but Jeff has him within his sights. But just when he was about to clap Ricky, his heart starts doing that thing again, and his vision starts to blur again. So he's just shooting but can't really see what he's shooting at. Me in video games. Carlito now makes it upstairs and into a chopper, but Jeff shows up and grabs a hold of him. He points a gun at Carlito and says, present from Kalo. But you know, he should have just shot him instead of talking, because Ricky shows up from behind him and injects him with something. He drops to the ground immediately. Then Ricky claps Carlito and tells the pilot to fly the helicopter, but not so fast. Jeff's blood starts pumping again. He gets up and starts fighting with Ricky as the chopper's in the air. He's really holding on for dear life as Ricky's trying to push him off, but somehow Ricky can't manage that simple task. Instead, Jeff grabs a hold of him, and they both fall off the helicopter. But he doesn't even let Ricky fall to his death. He snaps his neck midair. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the biggest lesson from the movie. Even as Jeff is falling to his death, he still makes sure to call his girlfriend. But it goes to voicemail, so he leaves a really sweet message for her. A message he concludes with, you're the greatest, baby. Then he falls, bounces off a car, and falls to the ground.